Thank you for joining me for a yoga class. My name is Holly. My pronouns are she, her. We're going to start with a few rounds of sun salutes to warm up the body. Then we will hop into 26 and two yoga for 60 minutes. After which, if you'd like to stay, I'm gonna offer 30 minutes of yin yoga as well, which is a really nice combination of kind of more active yoga followed by really relaxing floor-based yoga. So you're welcome to stay for all or part of that. Um, if at any point something in class does not feel right for your body, you are welcome to take a different variation of a posture, skip a posture, do something else entirely. Um, this is your class and I hope you enjoy your time with your yoga practice today. For the sun suits, you can come towards the top of your space, whether that's a mat or a carpet like I'm practicing on. Bring your feet close together, arms down by your side. I'm going to stand back a bit and show you in periphery. Bring your hands together at heart center, and we will begin by saluting the sun. As you inhale, lift your arms up overhead, look up as if you're saluting or greeting the sun. Exhale through your nose, bend your knees, fold forward, hands to floor, relax your head. Inhale through your nose, look forward and lengthen into a halfway lift, shoulders out of the ears. Exhale, hands to floor, shoulder width distance, step back into a plank or a tabletop position. On your next exhale, hug your elbows in and lower yourself down to the floor. Inhale, push up into a back bend. You can do cobra with elbows bent and thighs on the floor, or up dog with arms straight and thighs off the floor. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up for down dog. You can bend one knee, straighten the other, pedal out your legs, and then press your heels to the floor, hips to the ceiling, drop your head, look for your thighs behind you. If down dog is not speaking to you, you can also come onto your knees and take a child's pose instead. Sink your hips back as you reach your arms forward. On your next inhale, hands to the floor, look forward, step forward, lengthen into your halfway lift. Exhale as you fold, head hangs heavy. Inhale, arms of your ears, reach your eyes, lift up, look up. Exhale, hands down. Let's try that again. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold, slow exhale. Inhale, look forward, lengthen. Exhale, step back, keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale, your up dog or cobra. Exhale, your down dog or child's pose. Take a breath here, slow inhale. Slow exhale. Inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen. You can have hands on thighs, shins or the floor in front of you. Exhale as you fold, knees can bend. Inhale, arms with your ears, lift up, look up. Exhale, hands down. Last one, inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen, connect to the breath. Exhale, step back, keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale, your up dog or cobra, shoulders out of the ears. Exhale, your down dog or child's pose. If you're doing child's pose, sink your hips down towards your heels. And if you're doing down dog, sink your heels down to the floor. If your heels don't touch the floor, you might widen your step a little bit so your feet are further apart. And if you have tight hamstrings, you can also micro bend your knees to take uh, stress away from the backs of the legs. On your next inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen. Slow exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your eyes, salute the sun. Exhale, hands down. Beautiful, that's our little warm up. We will now hop into 26 and two yoga. Come to the middle of your space with your feet together, toes, heels touching nicely for two sets of pranayama standing deep breathing. Interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs and glue your knuckles underneath your chin. Rock your weight into your heels. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears. You made it to class. Concentrate, meditate and begin. Inhale, chin down and arms up. Breathe in through your nose. Lift your elbows up. Suck your stomach in, fill up your lungs. Good, exhale, head up, exhale through your mouth. Slowly push your head back, reach your arms forward. Keep exhaling, elbows touch. Inhale, elbows out and arms up. Slowly bring your chin down. Look straight ahead, lift your elbows all the way up. Breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up, slowly push your head back. Look way, way, way back for the wall behind you. Elbows touch away from your body. Inhale, head down, breathe in through your nose down through your throat to the very bottom of your lungs. Good, exhale. As you exhale, open your mouth wide like you're fogging up and you're on the ceiling. Elbows touch when your lungs are empty. Inhale, head down, keep the weight in your heels. Contract your quadricep muscles. Squeeze your gluteal muscles, suck your stomach in. Exhale, head up, lock your legs. Weight stays in the heels. Draw your navel back towards your spine, chest up to the ceiling, elbows point forward. 
Inhale, head down. You're never forcing your body. So this breathing exercise might look different for you than it does for me, right? The elbows might come here or even here. Exhale, head up. As you exhale, you're never forcing your head to drop back. So sometimes we just look up towards the ceiling and then bring your elbows together, pointing down rather than forward. Inhale, head down. What matters is that you're connecting to the breath. Make this the deepest breath so far, breathing all the way into the bottom of your lungs. Exhale, head up. In our day-to-day -day life, we don't really use our full lung capacity, but the lungs need to be worked out like any other part of the body. Inhale, head down. This is the last breath in the first set, deepest breath of your day. Spine a little longer, elbows a little higher, lungs a little fuller. Suck your stomach in, breathe deep, full lungs. Good. Exhale, head up, take your time. Eyes open, hips forward, legs locked, stomach in. Keep exhaling, push, squeeze, elbows touch. Change, arms down, you can roll out your shoulders and head. Let's try that breathing exercise again, feet together. Interlock your 10 fingers, switch the grip, other thumb, pinky finger on top. Bring your knuckles underneath your chin like glue. Squeeze your thighs and glutes, engage your abdominal wall, grow taller out of the base of your spine, and begin, inhale, chin down and arms up, breathe in through your nose, lift your elbows up, suck your stomach in, fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up, exhale to your mouth, slowly push your head back, reach your arms forward, keep exhaling, elbows, touch. Inhale, head down for one, two, three, four, five, six. Full lungs. Exhale, head up, six, five, four, three, two, elbows touch. One. Inhale, head down. Use the full six seconds to inhale. Take in more and more and more air. Good. Exhale, head up. Use the full six seconds to exhale. Slow down your breath. Eyes open, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. So through the breathing exercise, you're learning to breathe a little slower, a little longer, a little deeper. Fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up. Take your time. Make a tight fist. Squeeze your palms together, wrists together, forearms, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. Make this the deepest breath so far. Breathing into the top of the lungs, middle of the lungs, all the way to the bottom of the lungs. Elbows up. Exhale, head up. Make this the most relaxed exhale so far. Letting the day go, the weekend go. Keep exhaling. Lungs empty, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. Last breath. Second set, deepest breath of your life when your lungs are totally full. Surprise yourself. Take in one more sip of air. Exhale, head up. Take your time. Let everything go through the exhale breath. Any worries, any cares, let them go. Be here now. Elbows touch. Change. Arms down. You can roll out your shoulders and head. Let's continue. Ardha Trindasana with Padasasana. Half moon with hands to feet pose. Feet together. Inhale. Arms up. Palms together. Interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, nice tight, white knuckle grip, stretch up out of your waist and bend right and left, right and left. Every time you pass to the middle, reach up a little taller, like you're trying to touch the ceiling. And when you can't stretch anymore, come to stop in the middle. Bring the weight into your heels, press your hips a little forward, squeeze your palms together, head and arms back, touch your biceps to your ears, engage your abdominal wall. Inhale, breathing, stretch up out of your waist, try to touch the ceiling. Exhale, breathing absolutely straight line. Slowly bend your body to the right. Good. Without bending elbows, without bending knees, continuously push your hips to the left beyond your flexibility. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling in the left side of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes. Keep the weight in your heels. Press your hips a little forward. Squeeze your palms together up to the wrists. Upper body back. Touch your biceps to your ears. Push your left hip a little forward to get your two hips in line. Good. Now bring your right shoulder forward, open your chest like a flower petal blooming. Option to stay here or get a little deeper at the end. Come down, push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up, stop in the middle. Press your heels down, pull your abdomen in, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, slowly bend to the left, press your hips to the right, breathe. In and out through your nose. Let your breath be your guide. If at any point in class you're holding your breath, you can't breathe or you're gasping for breath, that might be a sign you've gone a little too far. Slow down. We want to flood our body with breath the whole time. Nice oxygenating the muscles, right? Oxygenating the bloodstream so we don't have lactic acid buildup after class. Once you can breathe, focus on alignment. Right hip a little forward, left shoulder forward. At the end, you can get deeper. Go for depth if you want. Come down, push, push, push. Change. Inhale to come up. First back bend of the day. This is an example of a posture where you might not be able to do deep belly breaths. Take a deep breath. 
full lines. Keep your eyes open and relax your head back. And from here, you can take little sips of air off of that big pocket of air in your lungs. Squeeze your butt, lift your chest, and immediately bring your arms back with your ears trying to touch the wall behind you. Whole spine backward bending from coccyx to the neck, lower back, middle back, upper back, bend your total spine backward bending. Keep the weight in your heels, lock your legs. Inhale, breathing, push your stomach, thighs, hips, everything forward. Exhale, breathing, bring your arms back, look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back. Change, inhale to come up, big stretch up, decompress your spine. Exhale, stomach in, bend your knees, fold hands to floor, relax your head. Go for a walk, move your hips, shake your head. This is a U-turn from back bending to forward folding. At the beginning of class, your spine might not be quite warmed up yet. Move your hips to get your lower back nice, relaxed, comfortable, easy, and flexible. Have a on hands to feet pose, bend your knees halfway. You can grab the backs of your calves or your Achilles or your heels from underneath. Step on all 10 fingers, pull on your heels. Roll your weight into your toes and lift your hips up. Stretch your upper body down from the lower spine of the floor. Pulling is the object of stretching. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling in the back of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes with a smiling, happy face. Roll forward a little bit more. Find your edge. Lift your hips up. Stretch your spine down. Change. Come on up. Arms with ears. Knees can bend as you lift up. Float your arms down. And you stand a little taller. Beautiful. Second set. Feet together. Inhale. Arms up. Palms together. Interlock your fingers. Release your index fingers. Cross your thumbs. Maybe switch the grip. Other thumb. Pinky finger on top. Hips forward. Arms back. Stomach in. Inhale. Stretch up. Exhale. Slowly bend to the right. Press your hips to the left. In the second set, you're a little bit more warmed up. You might be able to go deeper into the posture. You also want to use what you learned in the first set to inform the second set. So, you know, first set, you had to come out earlier. It didn't feel so good. Rather than going deeper, you might actually go do a little bit less and just focus on your breath in and out through your nose. As long as you're breathing, you're practicing yoga as far as I'm concerned. On the inhale, lengthen your arms. On the exhale, come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up, stop in the middle. Shoulders down, chin up, chest up, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, slowly bend to the left, press your hips to the right. Um, especially in the United States right now, there's a big emphasis on asana, on postures in yoga. And there's a big emphasis on this idea that like bigger is better or going deeper into a posture somehow means that you're a better yogi. Um, I totally reject that. There's eight limbs of yoga. Only one of them is posture. Another one is breath. So you can always focus on your breath. Other areas of yoga are like meditation, concentration, right? Right action. So there's so many different options available to you in this time, whether that's focusing on your breath or just concentrating on a spot in the you know wall in front of you. There's so many different ways to practice yoga. On the inhale, lengthen your arms, exhale, push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up, second heart opener. Keep your eyes open, relax your head back. Squeeze your butt, lift your chest and take your arms back with your ears. Whole spine backward bending from coccyx to the neck, lower back, middle back, upper back. Whole front of the body opening, right? You're opening through your armpits, your chest, your abdomen, your hips. Press your heels down, push your hips forward, lift your chest up, push your hands away from your face, bring your arms back, look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back. Change, inhale to come up, stretch. Exhale, stomach in, fold. Slow exhale as you go down. Hands to floor, relax your head, go for another walk, move your hips, shake your head, keep your heels on the floor. Notice what's a little bit more loose in the second set, what's still a little tighter, tender, still checking in at the beginning of class. Hot as socks, my hands to be posed, bend your knees, you can grab the backs of your calves, your Achilles or your heels from underneath. Pull on your heels, roll your weight forward into your toes, lift your hips up, push your knees back, slide stomach down thighs, chest down knees, face down the shins, one day top of the head touches the top of the toes, roll forward one more time, lift your hips up, push your knees back, try to lock your knees. Change, come on up, arms of ears, knees can bend as you lift up, beautiful, float your arms down, and you stand a little taller. Awkward, you can toss in a step your right foot to the right about six inches, hip width distance. Keep the insides of your feet perfectly parallel like 11s. Arms up, parallel to the floor, tricep muscles tight, all five fingers together. Reach your arms forward, engage your abdominal wall, bend your knees, sit back and down into a chair. Very nice feet flat position, spine straight to begin with, 100% of your body weight in your heels. Sit down halfway only, hips into a chair. Suck your stomach in and lift your upper body off your lower body, lift your chin up, chest up, lean back. 
fall back, way back, change, come on up, keep your arms there, press your hips forward, spread your toes wide, come up maximum on your tippy tippy toes like a ballerina, stretch up at the top, bend your knees and sit down. In the second part of this yoga posture, rather than leaning forward, lean back a little bit, lift your heels a little higher, good, knees a little higher, sit down into a chair, but don't sit below a chair. Change, come on up, last part, still breathing, squeeze your knees together, let your heels come a little off the floor and slowly sit down. Take your time, listen to your body, stop whenever you want or sit all the way down. Squeeze your knees together and forward, thighs parallel to the floor, arms parallel to the thighs, spine perfectly straight. Change, slowly come up, squeeze your knees together as you lift, good, heels down, right foot back, arms and shoulders down, take a breath. Go again, step your right foot to the right, six inches, not too big of a step, inside to your feet, parallel. Bring your arms up, parallel to the floor. Reach your arms forward, pull your abdomen in, bend your knees, sit back and down. So you can stick your butt out and fold forward. Your posture might look like this, or it might also look like this, or maybe even hands in prayer if the shoulders are hurting. So there's so many different options within every uh, part of this class. Pull your abdomen in, lift your upper body off your lower body, lift your chin up, chest up. Change, come on up, keep your arms there, press your hips forward, spread your toes wide, lift your heels, concentrate, meditate, levitate, stretch up and sit down. Nice little toe stretch here. We're also starting to work on balance. Engage your core, stretch the crown of your head up, sit down one more inch. Change, last part, come on up, still breathing. Squeeze your knees together, let your heels come a little off the floor and slowly sit down like you're sliding your back down a wet marble wall. Keep your hips lifted off your heels, drop your shoulders, engage your tricep muscles, relax your jaw. Change, slowly come up, squeeze your inner thighs together. Good, heels down, right foot back, arms and shoulders down. Eagle pose, Garudasana, doing the right side first. Inhale your arms over your head, big stretch up. Exhale, swing right arm. Under left arm, right elbow, under left elbow, cross first at your elbows again if you can at your wrists, palms together, thumbs towards your nose. Pull your elbows down, bend your knees, sit back and down, hips into a chair, stay down there, lean back and bring your right leg over your left leg as high as possible. Right over left, cross your legs, twist like ropes, eventually wrap your right foot behind your left calf muscle. So your posture might look like this. It might also look like this, right? Or somewhere in between. If your foot is wrapping, you might try sitting down a little bit lower. Pull your elbows down, lean back. Good, change. Feet together, arms up, left side. Swing left arm, under right arm, left under right, palms together, thumbs towards your nose. Pull elbows down, sit back and down, hips into a chair, lean back, and bring your left leg over your right leg. Cross, twist, squeeze, and breathe. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, arch your upper body back. Bring your knees to the left, upper body to the right, twist like ropes. Sit back and down, upper body back at the end. Change, feet together, arms up, second set, here we go. Swing right arm, under left arm, pull elbows down, bend your knees, sit back and down. Lean back and bring right leg over left leg, hamstring over quadricep. On this side, knees to the right, upper body to the left, Wrists, elbows, knees, and ankles all in one line. Sit a little lower. Breathe a little slower. Upper body back at the end. Good, change feet together, arms up. Last one, here we go. Left arm, under right arm. Pull elbows down, stomach in. Bend your knees, sit back and down, just like chair pose, hips back. Keep your hips low and bring left leg over right leg. As we transition into balancing postures, heart rate might increase a little bit but you still wanna be able to breathe in and out through your nose. Let your breath be your guide. Knees to the left, upper body to the right, sit down, lean back, change. Feet together, big stretch up. Slowly float your arms down. Party time, you can grab a sip of water if you want. Ooh. Cheers, friends. Kiki, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> I was like, I think that might say Kiki. Okay, awesome. Let us continue with the balancing series, beginning with standing head to knee, Dandayamana, Jhani Sharasana. Shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg, lift your right leg up, flex your toes back. 
Option to stay here or round down and pick up your right foot. All 10 fingers interlocked, webbing to webbing grip. From start to finish, standing legs should be solid. Concrete, one piece, lamp post, unbroken, you have no knee. Option to stay in the setup or as you're ready, inhale. Slowly, gently lift your right leg up. Stretch it forward until your right leg is exactly parallel to the floor. From here, kick your heel forward, flex your toes back, breathe through your nose. If both legs lock, bend elbows down. Touch elbows to calf muscles. One day, elbows go below the calf muscles. Lock your knee, lock your knee, lock your knee. Change, slowly reverse out. Very nice. Shift your weight to your right leg. Evenly distribute your body weight on your right foot. Lift your left leg up, flex your toes back, lift your pelvic floor, engage your abdominal wall. Option to stay here or start to round down. You might round down a little bit, or you might even try picking up your foot. You can also start with your knee higher in your chest. You don't have to round your spine as much. Often when our back is tight, our knee will buckle. Keep your leg long. And as you're ready, slowly, gently left leg up. So you want to keep your knee over your ankle. For my flexi folks, it's not that you're hyperextending your knee. It's just that you want the joints in line. So hip over knee over ankle. Kick your heel forward. Flex your toes back. If both legs lock, puff up your chest and bend elbows down. Shoulders down away from your ears. Move your heel forward, hip forward, toes back and change. Arms straight, bend your left leg, left foot down, put your hands on your back, do a little back bend or any bend. <laughs> Having not practiced this yoga in like a week, which I know that's, I feel very privileged that I get to practice it usually multiple times a week, but um, it's always funny to like leave for a week and then come back and, I, and appreciate, you know, <laughs> it's not always easy. Lock your left leg, lift your right leg up, flex your toes back right now. I'm always interested when I take a break from yoga, um, what I've, you know, what feels difficult and what, um, what I've, what I've kept, what memory lives in my body. Inhale, right leg up, bend elbows down, tuck chin to chest, put your forehead on your knee, hold and breathe for three, two, one. Slowly bring your head up, arms straight. Bend your right leg, return your right foot to the floor. Nice. Shift your weight to your right leg, good stuff. Lock your right leg, lift your left leg up, toes back, round down, pick up your left foot, webbing to webbing grip. Contract your inner thigh as well as your outer thigh. Lift your kneecap, squeeze gluteus minimus and maximus. Inhale, left leg up. Bend elbows down. Tuck chin to chest. Put your forehead on your knee. Lock your knee, lock your knee, lock your knee. Slowly bring your head up, arms straight, bend your left leg, return your left foot to the floor. Very nice. That was a forward curl. Next, we do a big back bend and shoulder opener. Standing, bow pulling pose, Dandayamana Dhanurasana. Feet together, bring your right hand up, elbow touches the body, palm faces the ceiling. Bring your hand out to the right. Give yourself a high five for practicing yoga today. Yes, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist. Pick up the inside of your right foot at the ankle bone, thumb with your index finger. Bring your left arm up and back with your ear, knees together to start. So you wanna start with your hips in line. Even if your knees aren't touching, just make sure one hip isn't way higher than the other. If you have a grip on your foot, you can stay here in the setup, right? Or as you're ready, take a breath, stretch up and slowly charge your body forward. Simultaneously, kick your right leg back and up. So in standing head to knee, we strengthened our hip flexor and now we're stretching the hip flexor. In standing head to knee, we rounded the spine and compressed the abdominal wall. Now we're bending our spine and stretching out through our chest and abdomen. These are complementary postures. Slowly bring the body down and the leg up. The more you come down, the more your heart rate increases, it becomes a little bit more cardiovascular. Body down more, leg up more, charge your body forward, kick, kick, kick. Good, change. Slowly kick yourself out of the posture, feet together, arms down. Bring your left hand up, out to the left, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist, pick up the inside of your left foot. Bring your right arm up and back with your ear. So even in the setup, you're stretching out the hip flexor, the quad, you're opening through the chest and shoulder. And of course you're working on your balance. Option to stay here, or as you're ready, lock your right leg, point your left toes, lift your chin and shoulder, stretch up, and slowly kick into your hand. Simultaneously charge your body forward, take a breath. 
So heart rate might increase, but you're still breathing through the nose. Kicking and stretching should be equal. Simultaneous 50-50, the harder you kick, you can balance forever. Body down to parallel, big toe to the ceiling. Relax your right toes, point your left toes. Body down more, leg up more, reach forward, kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly. Come out of the posture, the way you went in, feet together, arms down, take a breath. Second set, bring your right hand up, out to the right, reach back, pick up the inside of your right foot, bring your left arm up and back, knees together, walk your left leg, point your right toes, lift your chin and chest, stretch up, and slowly kick, stretch, Breathe, kick into your hand, stretch forward, breathe through your nose, left shoulder forward, right shoulder back, bring the body down more, leg up more, charge your body forward, kick back, kick up, kick up one more time. Good, change, slowly come out of the posture, feet together, arms down. Last one, left hand up, out to the left, Reach back, pick up the inside of your left foot. This is a moving meditation. Bring your right arm up and back with your ear. So it's contemplative, right? Contemplative. Lock your right leg, point your left toes, lift your chin and chest, stretch up, and slowly kick, stretch, breathe. So this is an opportunity, not just for balance or cardio or stretching or strengthening. It's really about an opportunity for meditation in for contemplation, realization, body down more, leg up more, charge your body forward, kick, 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 change slowly, come out of the posture, good. Come to the back of your mat, Tula Dandasana balancing stick. So far in the balancing series, we rounded the spine, we did a back bend, and now we're gonna stretch out the spine, making everything long. Feet together, arms up, palms together, interlock fingers, Release index fingers, cross thumbs. So you're already really stretching out your shoulders, chest, and spine here. Step your right foot forward. Shift your weight into your right foot. Option to stay here or start to come down parallel to the floor. Arms, body, head, legs, everything parallel to the floor from the side. Body makes a T like Tom, not a broken umbrella. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, change. Left foot down, right foot back, lean back, stretch up. Step your left foot forward. Shift your weight to your left foot. Option to stay here or start to come down. Keep your arms with your ears. Even if you don't go as far into the posture, this is a great shoulder opener. Bring the chest down, chin forward, lift your right leg up. Change, slowly right foot down. Good. Left foot back, float your arms down, breathe. Second set, arms up, palms together. Interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, other thumb, pinky finger on top, lean back, stretch up, step your right foot forward, lock both legs, stretch, and come down. So on this side of the posture, because of my hip, I stay light and lifted. You might come all the way down. Again, you can always take different options in all of the postures, body down, leg up, stretch. Good, change, left foot down, right foot back, lean back, stretch up, step your left foot forward, lock both legs, stretch, until always focus on what you can do rather than what you cannot do. Squeeze your palms together, touch your biceps to your ears, stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, change, right foot down, left foot back, float your arms down. Okay, come to the top. If you have a mat, come to the top of your mat. You can face the long side of your mat. I will face you. Next is standing separate leg stretching, Dande Amana, Vikatha Pada, Pashimottanasana. Inhale your arms over your head, big stretch up. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, nice big step, arms down parallel to the floor. You can turn your toes in or keep the insides of your feet parallel. Lock your legs, inhale, lengthen. Slow exhale, fold. Lunge at your hips. Lots of options. You can put your hands on the floor in front of you. You can grab the outside of your feet. You can grab your heels from behind. Pull on your heels. Roll your weight into your toes. Lift your hips up. Push your knees back. Lock your knees. First the leg stretching, then the hip stretching, lower spine stretching, whole spine stretching, whole body stretching. Three 60 degree angle stretching, coccyx to toes, coccyx to forehead, roll forward. Touch your forehead to the floor in between the feet. And change slowly come up take your time we're going to float a triangle trick and press your hips forward stretch the crown of your head up 
Turn your right foot out. Take a bigger step. Make sure your heels are in line. Inhale, bend your right knee and lunge. You might sit all the way down so that your right thigh is parallel to the floor, or you might keep your hips lifted like I'm doing. Push your hips forward, lean back, and move your arms at the same time. Tilt your upper body to a 45 degree angle. So if there's a nice long diagonal line from your ankle to the crown of your head. Look up towards the ceiling, touch your chin to your shoulders, stretch your left arm up, reach your right arm down. Push your left hip forward, push your right knee back. Now turn, twist upper body back like spine twisting posture. Lock your left leg, keep your left foot flat on the floor. Stomach in, change. Move your arms, straighten your right leg, turn your right toes in, left toes out, make sure your heels are in line. Inhale, bend your left knee and lunge. So keep your right leg super solid as you sit down. Push your hips forward, lean back, feet are flat on the floor, and move your arms at the same time. Look up and stretch up. Your posture might look like this. As the hips start to open up, it might also look like this, thigh parallel to the floor. Elbow in front of the knee, cover your fingertips between your big and second toe. Don't touch the floor, don't push any weight on the floor. Keep looking up and stretching up. Push your right hip forward and down, push your left knee back, now turn. Twist up your body back, block your right leg, keep your right foot flat on the floor. Engage your core, change, move your arms, straighten your leg, left toes in. Take a slightly smaller step. Bring your arms up, palms together, cross your thumbs. Pick up your toes and pivot to the back of your mat for standing, separate leg head to knee, Dandaya Mana, Vipatapada, Janusharasana. Turn your back toes in. Push your left hip forward. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, chin to chest, slowly go down. This is a rounded spine posture. It's one to be cautious of if you have a history of slip discs. You're always welcome to skip the posture or try it with a flat back. Otherwise, round your spine, tuck your chin to your chest, pull your abdomen in, touch your forehead to your knee. If your forehead and knee aren't touching, you might try bending your front leg. You can take a bigger or smaller step. You can really push the floor away from you, tuck your chin to your chest, and maybe bring your forehead and knee closer together. One day, forehead and knee touch. One day, you can lift your forehead all the way onto your thigh. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together. Change, slowly uncurl, take your time, at a last. As you're ready, pick up your toes and pivot to the other side of the room or the front of your mat. Make sure your heels are in line, but not crisscross. Turn your back toes in, push your right hip forward one, two, three, four, five times. Inhale, stretch up. Slow exhale, chin to chest, go down. Round, scoop, curl. Tuck, concave, press your right hip forward to keep the two hips in line. Tuck your chin to your chest, bring your forehead towards your knee. Front side compression, throat choked, eyes open, breathing normal. Stretch your fingers beyond your big and second toe. Bring maximum weight to your left front foot, left hip up, right hip forward, two hips in line. Push your forehead into your knee a couple times real quick. Lift your kneecap, stabilize your legs, lock both legs. Hands together. Change. Imagine you're dragging your forehead up your thigh, your chest, arms with ears, head up last. As you're ready, pivot on your heels, step your right foot back, float your arms down. Great. I'll show you that uh, second set from the side, starting with stretching, Paschimottanasana, inhale, arms up, exhale, step your right foot to the right, nice, generous step, be generous with yourself. You can keep the insides of your feet parallel or turn your toes in. Lock your legs, inhale, stretch up, stomach in, exhale, fold. And lots of options, especially if your knees are bending. Start with your hands on the floor. You can walk your hands forward, bring the weight into your arms, lift your hips up, push your knees back, lock your knees. If you have a grip on your foot, bend your elbows back, elbows to calf, shoulders to ceiling, belly button to spine. Everybody roll forward. So the weight is forward, forward, forward. Lift your hips up, full stretch. Take a bigger step if you need to, and touch your head to the floor in between your feet. Change, slowly come up. Triangle, trikonasana, press your hips forwards. We're already opening the hips. Stretch your spine up. So we're already stretching the spine. Turn your right foot out. You might take a little bit of a bigger step for triangle. Inhale, bend your right knee and lunge. Press your hips forward, lean back, and move your arms at the same time. Notice if you're um, sticking your butt out and leaning forward, press your hips forward a little bit and lean back. Look up for your left thumb. Push your left hip forward and down. Push your right knee back with the help of your elbow. Now roll your left rib cage back. Open your chest like a flower petal blooming. Lock your left leg. Lift your left knee back. Squeeze your left glute. Keep your left pinky toe on the floor. Change. Move your arms. Straighten your leg. Right toes in. 
left toes out, two heels in line, inhale, bend your left knee, lunge, sit down, lean back, and move your arms. So this is a spine twist. It's also an abdominal wall twist, right? Like bring the right shoulder back as you look up and stretch up. Push your right hip forward and down. Push your left knee back with the help of your elbow. Reach your right arm up, stretch your left arm down. Now turn, twist upper body back like spine twisting posture at the end of class. Lock your right leg, keep your right foot flat on the floor. Change, move your arms, straighten your leg, left toes in, maybe a little bit of a smaller step. Arms up, palms together, cross your thumbs, pick up your toes and pivot to the back of your mat for standing separate leg, head to knee, second step. Turn your back toes in, push your left hip forward, press your palms together, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, chin to chest, go down. You might try squeezing your left glutes and pressing the left hip forward the whole time so the hips stay in line. Pull your abdomen in, tuck your chin to your chest, bring your forehead to your knee. Remember, always focus on what you can do rather than what you cannot do. So I'm not touching my forehead to my knee here, but I'm still breathing. And I'm still focusing on the compression aspect of this posture, right? We're kind of like squeezing and massaging our internal organs here. Draw your belly button up towards your spine and your spine up towards the ceiling, chin to chest, jaw relaxed. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, stabilize the joints, hands together. Change. Imagine you're dragging your forehead up your thigh, arms of ears, head up last. Pivot on your heels to the other side of the room. I'll face you. Heels are in line, not crisscross. Turn your back toes in so you can press your right hip forward, squeeze palms together, wrist straight. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, chin to chest, go down. Can you look at your belly button all the way down? You can't see your front foot all the way down. You might try keeping your hands together in prayer, focusing on the balancing aspect of this posture. Shift your weight to your front foot. That helps with balance and alignment. Left hip up, right hip forward, two hips in line. Push your forehead into your knee. Walk both legs, hands together. Change, slowly uncurl. Chin to chest, arms with your ears. Head up last. Pivot on your heels. Right foot back, float your arms down. Come to the middle of your mat for the hip opening series. We'll flow tree pose to toe stand. Tree pose to dasana. Shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg, lift your right foot up, turn your knee out to the right. Point your right toes. You might place your ankle on your shin, your knee, your thigh. You can even hold on to your foot from underneath, heel to groin. Let your right knee drop down and back into a half lotus shape, never force your body. You can bring your right hand to the center of your chest, and if you can balance left hand. Option to stay here, or look towards the floor, fold forward, toe stand, Padangustasana. This is always an interesting one after I've taken a break from yoga. Hands to floor, lean forward, lift your heel, bend your knees, sit down. Let's see what happens. Walk your hands back to either sides of your hips, stretch your spine up towards the ceiling. Always be curious about your yoga practice. Left hand to the center of your chest, right hand, palms together, come a half inch off your heel. If you're ready, hands to floor. You can come up on two feet or lift your hips up, straighten your standing leg, heel down, and then press your hips forward, lift from the lower ribs to come up. Good, change, right leg down. Shift your weight to your right leg, squeeze right thigh tight, lift your left leg up, heel to costume, and let your left knee drop. You can bring one or both hands together. On this side, my foot falls, so I'm gonna hold on to my foot. Option to stay here in tree pose or take a breath, stretch up. And on the exhale, fold. Hands to floor. I'm going to stay here, but I'll walk you through it. Lean forward so the weight is in your arms. Lift your right heel. Keep leaning forward as you bend your right knee and sit down. So the weight is in your arms, not your knee as you sit. Walk your hands back to either sides of your hips. Stretch the crown of your head up to the ceiling. Left hand to the center of your chest. Right hand, elbows down, spine straight. Toe stand, come a half and chop your heel. As you're ready, bring your hands back to the floor. You can come up on two feet or push your hands into the floor, lift your hips up, straighten your standing leg, heel down, and then change, slowly reverse out. Very nice. Left leg down, honor yourself, give yourself high five, fist up, turn around, Savasana. We are on the floor for the rest of class. I'm going to adjust my camera angle. Kiki, I just saw your message, that's so cute. It's me. Okay. <laughs> Lie on your back with your head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. Bring your heels together, let your toes fall open, arms down by your side, palms face the ceiling, eyes open, mouth closed, breathing normal. Savasana is a gas station.
Let it fill you up. Take an inhale, feel your body rise. And then exhale, feel your body fall. There's a, um, there's like a Buddhist uh, cone, like a Zen cone, um, kind of like riddle poem that I love. Um, and it's, it's a story that takes place like oh, in, in the past, okay? And, and there's this idea that um, there's this father and son and, and the dad's a, um, he's a farmer. And uh, one day the horses in his farm get out and so they, they escape and his neighbor comes up to, comes up to the farmer and is like, oh my gosh, what horrible fortune. Or sorry, I'm telling this wrong. One horse escapes. And the, um, and the, the farmer's neighbor comes up and goes, what horrible fortune that a horse escaped. I'm so sorry. And the farmer goes, we'll see. And the next day, the horse comes back with another horse, with a new friend. So now the farmer has an extra horse. And the, his neighbor comes up and goes, oh my gosh, what good fortune. Now you have double the horses, right? Like how incredible. And the farmer goes, we'll see. And then the farmer's son the next day is trying to tame or like break the new horse. And he gets fucked off and he falls and he breaks his leg. And the neighbor comes up and he goes, I'm so sorry about your son. That horse turned out to be really bad luck. And the farmer goes, we'll see. And then the next day, um, the army comes because they're preparing for a battle and they're looking for every able-bodied young man. And so because the farmer's son, you know, broken his legs, he can't go to war. And that's, that's the story or the idea um, that you never know what something is or what it will bring, right? We'll see. And I think about that a lot when I practice yoga. Often I come into a yoga practice assuming like, ooh, my body's really stiff today, so I'm not going to be able to do that posture. I'm feeling good. I'm going to rock this out. And instead, I'm much more open to the experience of being present in my body, in my mind, in my heart when I have more of a we'll see attitude rather than a like, I know what comes next attitude. So let's see what happens in the floor series, beginning with Pavana Muttasana when we're moving pose. Bend your right leg up, interlock your 10 fingers, grab your right shin, nice tight white knuckle grip, pull your knee out to the right, down towards your shoulder, completely avoid your rib cage. Keep your head on the floor, look down the center line of your body, hold. Change, right leg down, bend your left leg up, interlock your 10 fingers, pull your knee out and down. Push the pads of your fingers into the backs of your hands to strengthen your grip. Change, left leg down, both legs lift up, grab your elbows, each other, give yourself a big hug for coming to class. You can also grab the backs of your legs. You can grab your shins. You can interlace your fingers, grab wrists or forearms, or if it's easy to grab your elbows, palm your elbows. You can get even more compact. Change, arms down and eyes open. Take a breath. Second set, bend your right leg, switch the grip, other thumb, pinky finger on top, interlace your 10 fingers, grab your right shin just below the knee, pull your knee out and down. Keep your left leg on the floor. If your left calf muscle does not naturally touch the floor, you can flex your left toes back to anchor left side body down. Change, right leg down, left leg up, pull your knee out and down. This is a good grip strengthener, good hip opener. Um, and it's also good for digestion. You're purposely putting pressure on your lower abdomen. This posture is called wind removing pose for a reason. Change, left leg down, both legs up, grab your elbows each other. It's also really good for giving yourself a hug. And it's a nice way to lengthen and realign your spine. Keep your head on the floor. Without lifting your head, tuck your chin in slightly, look down the center line of your body, hold and breathe. Eventually, or in the future, when the bone joint skeletal system has improved, the whole spine from coccyx to the neck will be flat on the floor. Change, arms down and eyes open. Next, we do a straight leg sit up. If you have any concerns about your back, you can skip the sit up. I'm gonna skip the first sit up. You're welcome to join me. Otherwise, legs together, arms over your head, ground your heels into the floor, take a breath. Hold your breath, stomach in, chin to chest, sit up. Exhale, grab your big toes. Exhale, elbows to floor, forehead to knees. Turn, lie on your abdomen for the spine strengthening series, beginning with Cobra, Bhujangasana, good for your lower lumbar spine. Place your hands flat on the floor, just below your shoulders. So your elbows point up to the ceiling, zip up your legs like a cobra's tail. Lock your legs, squeeze your butt, look up and lift. Stretch your upper body off the floor. Beautiful, use 100% spine strength. Come up halfway only, elbows stay bent. They make an L, a 90 degree angle. Hug your arms into your sides, roll your shoulders back and down your spine. Don't forget about your cobra's tail. Lock your legs. Legs, squeeze your butt, push your hands, feet, and hip, hips flat into the floor. Now look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good and change. Slowly lower down, look to your right, lift here on your mat, arms down, palms face the ceiling, big toes together, heels fall open. 
Second set, bring your chin forward, place your hands on the floor just below your shoulders so your elbows point up. Zip up your legs like a cobra's tail. Lock your legs, squeeze your butt, look up and lift. So at base level, this is a back bend, but there's actually quite a bit going on for such a simple posture. Um, you're strengthening your arms, right? Push your hands flat into the floor. You're strengthening your legs, contract your quads and glutes, press your feet and hands down. You're also massaging your abdomen. This posture is good for digestion. You're opening up through your chest and your shoulders where we tend to carry a lot of tension. You're strengthening your spine and there's a lot of activation in the upper spine going on here. Squeeze shoulder blade scapula together, look up and lift. Good change. Slowly lower down, look to your left right here in your mat, arms down, heels open. I often find it's some of the more simple yoga postures that are actually the most dynamic, right? There's a lot going on, even with just small body movements. Bring your chin forward for locust, shalabhasana, chin forward, arm straight position. Rotate your arms, your shoulders, so your palms face the floor. Option to keep your arms out to the side or bring your arms underneath you, stretching out the tendons and ligaments and the arms and hands. Lock your right leg, point your right toes, and lift your right leg up to a 45 degree angle, half of 90. Foot should come over the top of your head, lengthen and lift. Change, right leg down. Relax your right leg, lock your left leg, point your left toes and lift your left leg up. Imagine you're drawing your left big toe all the way up the back wall, shoulders down, leg up change, left leg down. Third part, tuck your chin and mouth down. So one leg is practiced for two legs. Bring your arms a little closer underneath you. Zip up your legs like a cobra's tail. Toes and heels touch, lock your legs, squeeze your butt, point your toes, roll forward and lift both legs up. Come up, everybody come up, struggle a little harder, don't give up. Mouth down, push your hands back, shoulders down, lock your legs, thighs up, change, lower down, take your arms out, look to your right, left ear on your mat, take a breath. Second set, bring your chin forward, arm straight position. Bring your arms underneath you as best you can. One day, arms invisible underneath the body. Lock your right leg, point your right toes, and lift your right leg up for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Lift up, three, two, one. Change right leg down. Lock your left leg, point your left toes, lift your left leg up for 10. Eyes open, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, lift up, three, two, one, change, left leg down, chin and mouth down, bring your arms a little closer, lock your legs, point your toes, roll forward, and lift both legs up. In the second set, you can try bringing your feet apart, see if you can lift up a little higher, and then bring these feet back together, squeeze your butt, roll forward, legs up, change, good for you, lower down, take your arms out, releasing the tourniquet effect on the arms, look to your left, you get a nice stretch of blood to your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists, all the way into your fingertips. Purna Shalabhasana, full locust, chin forward, arms out to the side like airplane wings, zip up your legs like a cobra's tail, toes and heels touch, lock your legs, squeeze your butts, point your toes, look up and lift, arms, body, head, legs, everything lifts off the floor like a jumbo jet taking off, very nice, just your hip bones on the floor, the rest of your body's in the air, look up to the ceiling where your eyes go, body knows to follow, squeeze your inner thighs together, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes, now lift your thighs up, chin up, chest up, arms up, arms back, come up a little higher at the end, good, and change, lower down, tuck in your wings, look to your right, left ear on your mat, breathe, relax your jaw, relax your shoulders. Second set, chin forward, arms out to the sides, zip up your legs, lock your legs, point your toes, look up and lift. So in the spine strengthening series, we started with cobra pose where we lifted our chest. Then we did locust pose where we lifted our legs. Now we're in full locust where we're lifting chest and legs at once. This posture is so good for opening the chest and shoulders, and it's so good for strengthening your spine. So you can stand a little bit taller after class. Lock your legs, point your toes, look up, come up a little higher at the end. Good, change, lower down with control, tuck in your wings, look to your left. Eyes open, mouth closed, inhale. Slow exhale. Concentrate and meditate. Chin forward, Dhanurasana floor bow, bend your legs. Grab your feet from the outside, two inches below the toes, thumbs with your index fingers. Squeeze your butt, point your toes, look up towards the ceiling, then start to kick into your hands, very nice. 
continuously keep kicking without stopping, without intermission, it's the kick that drives the posture. Roll forward once, freeze between your ribs and hips, hold still, do little sips of air in and out through your nose, bring your knees in, feet out, wrist straight, point your toes, squeeze your butt, look up to the ceiling, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, lower down, look to your right, left ear on your mat, take a breath. Second set, last one on the stomach, chin forward, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside, bring the insides of your wrists close together, wrists straight, point your toes, squeeze your glutes, look up and kick into your hands. So you're strengthening your glutes, your hamstrings, your calves, you're stretching out your arms, your shoulders, your chest, you're doing a back bend. Again, in Cobra, we lifted the chest, in Locust, we lifted the legs, in Full Locust, we lifted chest and legs, and now in Bow Pose, we bring the hands and feet together for a deeper back bend. Point your toes, look up, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, lower down, look to your left, and let that one go. Bring your chin forward, put your hands on the floor, push up. Come to the top of your mat. I'm gonna show you from the side, fixed firm, Supta Vidrasana. Start in tabletop, open your knees and feet. As you're ready, start to walk your hands back and sink your hips down. You can have your hands on the floor in front of you, beside you or behind you. If you can sit down between your heels, option to stay here or put your hands on your feet, right elbow down, left elbow down, head to floor, tuck your chin in, neck shoulders on the floor arms over your head, grab your elbows each other. For the sake of time, we're just gonna do one long set of this and one long set of the next posture. You're stretching out your toes, your ankles, your knees, your quads, your hips. If you're all the way in the posture, you might also be doing a back bend. If you're upright, you might try bringing your hips down a little bit more halfway through. One day hips to floor, you're never forcing the posture, but you know, sometimes as you get a little bit deeper into it, maybe the body starts to open up more. If you're all the way in the posture, you might try walking your shoulders back closer to your hips to lift your chest higher like a natural human bridge. And if that's gravy, you might even try bringing your knees back together. One day knees touch, but knees never come off the floor. As you're ready, put your hands on your feet. Press yourself up, head up last. Very nice, turn around, savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. If you enjoy longer versions of the asanas after this, we are also going to, I'm going to offer 30 minutes of yin yoga where we hold different postures for even longer. And, you know, if your life is taking you elsewhere, you're welcome to show yourself out in a little bit, but otherwise you might try to stay and do a little bit of yin is always fun after 26 and two. Another sit up, legs together, arms over your head, chin to chest, sit up. Okay, come to the back of your mat for half tortoise, Arta Karmasana, again, just one long set. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels, arms up, palms together, cross your thumbs, inhale, stretch up, exhale, fold. Another thing when I take a week off is sometimes my time management, which is never exactly perfect, is even a little bit less managed. Forehead to floor, little fingers to floor. Tilt your pinky fingers down, try to get elbows and wrists off the floor one day. Just the pinky fingers on the floor, the rest of your arms are in the air. Reach your arms forward, sink your hips back, re-energize reorganize, revitalize, stretch. Change, come on up, arms with ears, very nice, arms down, turn around, savasana as you release out of the posture, you get this nice rush of blood through the lower body. Take an inhale, then exhale. Picture highly oxygenated blood flowing freely through your limbs. You can always skip sit-ups by rolling off to the side, otherwise legs together, arms overhead, chin to chest, sit up. Wonderful, turn, come to the top of your mat for camel. We will for sure do two sets of this. Again, I'm showing you from the side, sorry, you can't see my whole body. Stand on your knees, six inches between knees and feet. Put your hands on your lower back, thumbs outside, fingers down to the floor. Push your hips forward, hips over knees is a great hip flexor stretch. Keep your eyes open, look up, and if it feels good, let your head drop back. Option to stay here or go back halfway, freeze in the middle. Option to stay here, or right hand down, grab your right heel. Left hand down, grab your left heel, thumbs outside, fingers inside. Full palm grip on your heels, push your hips forward, lift your chest up. 
And as you're ready, place your hands on your back and change. Press yourself up, stretch up, sit down, turn around, Savasana. I was at a camp last week and gosh, after a seven hour car ride yesterday and sleeping on a camp <laughs> bunk bed for a week, I'm like, I, my body needed that back bend. Back bends sometimes feel uncomfortable when we're in them. They're so good for releasing tension from the front of the body and healing spine through gentle compression. One of my teachers often says, um, all back bends heal the spine. Legs together, arms overhead, chin to chest, sit up. All back bends, heal the spine. Come to the top of your mat. You can try opening your knees a little wider, eight to 10 inches between your knees, still six inches between your feet. Put your hands on your back. And again, a little bit goes a long way. Sometimes looking up towards the ceiling, even though you can't see me doing that. Sometimes looking up towards the ceiling is enough. If it feels good, lift your nose and chin and maybe head drops back. Option to stay here or go back halfway. You can keep your hands on your back or try left hand down, grab your left heel, right hand down, grab your left heel. It's that we'll see attitude. Just see what happens. Push your hips forward, lift your chest up, relax your head back. Place your hands on your back and change. Press yourself up, stretch up, sit down, turn around, Savasana. I think, you know, that, that we'll see, just see what happens attitude is really helpful in yoga, but I often think about like, gosh, if I approached everything in my life with that mentality, some other areas might also be a little bit easier, right? Just, just kind of being curious rather than assuming that we know, I think can be helpful. I think legs together, arms over your head, chin to chest, sit up. Come to the middle of your mat. I can only speak for myself, but I know when I go into a situation um, without huge expectations, it often ends up working out better for me and others involved. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels, grab your heels from the outside, big stretch up, chin to chest, go down, forehead to knees, top of head to floor, pull on your heels, don't lose the grip, lift your hips up. If there's a gap between your knees and head, you can walk your knees up one by one, but head stays in place. Squeeze your heels together, roll forward, lock your arms, lift your shoulders, stomach in, round your spine like a bunny. Bring your hips back down to your heels and change, slowly uncurl. So your head comes up last, very nice. Turn around, Savasana. And I was directing this camp for high school students. We did, we did like a new activity that was on the water and involved like rafts and stuff, which it ended up being fine. But I remember the calm before the storm, before the campers got into these like water rafts and tubes. And I remember looking out onto the placid lake and being, what don't I know now that I will know four hours from now after this activity is done? And luckily no one got hurt, but it's always a funny feeling to go into a situation and go, what will I know after this activity is done that I don't know right now? Legs together, arms over your head, chin to chest, sit up. Hindsight is always 2020. Come to the middle of your mat, knees feet together, grab your heels from the outside, big stretch up, chin to chest, go down. Forehead to knees, top of head to floor, pull on your heels, don't lose the grip, lift your hips up. If there's a gap between knees and head, you can walk your knees up one by one, but head stays in place. Roll forward, lock your arms, lift your shoulders, stomach in, round your spine. Bring your hips down and change, slowly uncurl. Head up last, very nice, turn around, Savasana. Sometimes when I'm feeling like not accomplished, I'll also use that prompt, like, what do I know now? that I didn't know this time last year? Or what do I know now that I didn't know last month? And I think that if you think about that, right, at least in my personal experience, I'm often like, oh, right, I've learned a lot, right? And then yoga, there's always more to learn. Even in a repetitive sequence like 26 and two yoga, there's always more to learn, not just about the yoga, but about yourself. Legs together, arms overhead, chin to chest, sit up. Come to the middle of your mat for one set of head to knee stretching and spine twist. One set, right leg out, left leg in, two legs make an L, a 90 degree angle, inhale, arms up. Exhale, turn to your right, tuck your chin to your chest, put your forehead on your knee. Interlock your 10 fingers, flex your toes back, bend your elbows down, suck your stomach in, left elbow down, left shoulder down, roll into the left. Change, arms up, left leg out, right leg in, two legs make an L, big stretch up, turn to your left, chin to chest, forehead to knee. You might also think like, what do I know now that I didn't know the first time that I practiced yoga? I bet you know a lot now, even if it's only like, I don't know, your third class, right? You know a lot. It's pretty cool how much knowledge you have. 
Press your heel forward, flex your toes back, bend your elbows down. Change, arms up, both legs out in front of you. If you're skipping, sit up, stay here. Otherwise, lay down and sit up. For Paschimottanasana stretching, I'll show you from the side. Bend your knees, hook onto your big toes with peace sign fingers, thumbs on top. Scoot your butt back, right, left, right, left, 10 to 15 times. Knees can stay bent if it helps you keep a flat back. If your legs are straight, stick your butt out, lock your legs, puff up your chest. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold. Rather than rounding the spine, think about arching your spine, even if you don't go as far into the posture. Think about lengthening from the lower back, middle back, upper back, all the way through the neck. Shoulders back, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, come down. Change, stay seated for spine twist. You might keep your left leg straight and cross your right heel over your left knee. You can also try bending your left knee. Right hand close behind you like a second spine, left arm up and over, grab left knee with left hand. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, pull abdomen in, look over right shoulder twist. You can keep your right hand behind you. You can also reach behind you, reach for your left thigh with your right hand for the half bind. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look back, twist, twist, twist. Change, unwind, swap out your legs, bend your right leg on the floor, touch left heel to right knee, left arm behind you, right arm up and over, grab right knee with right hand, point your right toes, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look back, twist. You can keep your left hand behind you. You can also take it off the floor and grab your hip, your waistband, or even your right thigh with your left hand. Push your elbow into your knee like triangle pose. Turn and twist upper body back. Good, change, unwind. Turn around, Savasana. We begin 26 and two with the breathing exercise, exhaling through the mouth. And we end full circle with another breathing exercise, exhaling through the mouth. Legs together, arms over your head, chin to chest, sit up. Wonderful, turn and come to the middle of your mat. Final breathing, Kapalbhati. You can sit knees, feet together, hips on your heels, hands on your thighs. You can also sit on your butt, crisscross applesauce. Lick your lips, swallow a couple times. Concentrate and meditate. Don't forget to have fun. All you have to do is exhale. Five, four, three, two, one. Sit up tall, lock your arms, drop your shoulders, look straight ahead. Begin. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Good for you. Honor yourself. Give yourself a hug. High five. Pat on the back. Turn around. Savasana. You can close your eyes. Open your arms and legs. I'm going to adjust my camera angle a little bit. Take up as much or as little space as you'd like. And take a nice, easy breath in through your nose and out through your nose. So if your, if your day is calling you elsewhere, I, we will miss you, but you're welcome to leave at your own time. Otherwise, we're going to transition into yin yoga. And our first yin posture is exactly what you're doing now. In many styles of yoga, it's called savasana, which translates to mean corpse pose or dead body pose, which can be, you know, a little macabre for a Sunday afternoon. Um, in yin yoga, yin has sometimes kind of like cuter names for postures. So in yin yoga, we call this puddle pose, kind of like a rain puddle. And the idea is you can open your arms and legs as much or as little as you'd like. And yin yoga, right, you can close your eyes for all of your time here, a little bit of it. I'm gonna hold this posture for a total of five minutes. I mentioned earlier that I believe that the most simple postures are often um, actually the most dynamic and profound. Um, this asana right here is a really wonderful example of that. I think kind of across the board and all different styles of yoga, most people you ask are gonna say that this posture, whether you call it savasana or puddle pose um, or another name, this is the most important posture. It's very grounding. It's actually a really great way to lengthen and reset your body. So picture your spine getting a little longer. Inhale, feel your body rise. Exhale, body fall. So three, 
Rules of yin yoga are you make a shape of your body like a puddle. You hold that shape, which we're doing now, and then you breathe. That's it, make a shape, hold a shape, breathe. Depending on the posture, there might be times where it gets a little uncomfortable. Maybe you get a little bored or even anxious. Sometimes yin yoga, even if physically it's gentle, we're on the floor. Um, it can be mentally challenging to hold still, like make a shape, hold a shape and breathe. So it can be just as much of a mental challenge as a physical endeavor. And sometimes in yin yoga, it's okay to feel a little discomfort, whether it's in body, mind, or spirit. However, um, if you are suffering in any way, if the posture does not feel good to you, just like in any other style of yoga, you are always welcome to stop take a break, or just, just make another shape of your body. Because we hold postures for long periods of time, um, you want to do like 70% of what you think you should be doing. So especially, you know, as we get further into this practice and we're making maybe slightly more complex shapes of our body, you don't want to push yourself all the way, right? 26 and 2 and yin yoga are really wonderful compliments because in 26 and 2 yoga, we hold postures anywhere from like 30 seconds to like maybe a minute or two, but no longer than that. So you'll often hear cues to like push, 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 or kick, kick, kick. Yin yoga is the opposite. You want to do a little bit less because we're holding the postures longer. We actually work deeper, not just into muscles, but into um, like connective tissue, right? Tendons, ligaments, fascia. And these are really nice complementary practices, I think. We'll take another minute here just to breathe and be still. Notice where you might be holding on to tension in your body. See if you can relax just a little deeper. Loosen your shoulders. Soften through your abdomen and hips. Let your hands, feet, and head be heavy on the floor. And inhale, feel your body rise. Anything you'd like to let go of, you can open your mouth. Let it go to the exhale breath. Our next yin yoga pose is called banana pose. We're going to make a banana shape with our body. Bring your feet close together, arms overhead. You might flex your toes back and take a little stretch here, almost like when you wake up in the morning and stretch up and down. And then as you're ready, start to walk your hands and your feet to the right side of your mat so that from a bird's eye view, your body makes a little bit of a banana shape. You're stretching the left side body and um, gently squeezing, compressing the right side body. There's many options from here, right? You can um, cross your left hand over your right hand for more of a shoulder stretch. If shoulders are tight or you're working with an injury, you can bring one or both arms down by your side and that'll loosen the stretch. You are also welcome to bend your elbows and catch opposite elbow and opposite hand. And if you'd like an IT band stretch to your outer left thigh, you can cross your left ankle over your right ankle. You're welcome to keep the back of your head on the floor or for a little bit more of a neck and left shoulder stretch, you might roll your right ear down towards the floor. We're gonna hold here for three minutes.
rather than forcing or pushing your way into the posture. See if you can relax. And then 26 into yoga, uh, we work on mobility, but we really do work on strength as well, right? And this can be cardiovascular at times. Here, rather than um, strengthening and like tensing muscles, we're relaxing and stretching out muscles. So again, rather than um, like focusing on like the, the strength aspect of an asana, you're gonna focus on the relaxation, not just relaxation in body, but relaxation in mind and spirit. Notice what muscles might still feel a little tense. And just gently give them permission to relax. Notice if the mind is, feels really alert. Sometimes when we enter into stillness, especially after running around all day, the brain gets a little confused and wonders if we're safe. Sometimes I like to literally tell my brain, like, thank you for protecting me. And also I know that I'm okay right now. I'm safe in my little yoga bubble container. Sometimes also closing the eyes feels relaxing. Sometimes it feels a little confusing or jarring. So if closing your eyes in your yin practice doesn't feel good, you can always keep your eyes open and do a soft fuzzy gaze beyond the tip of your nose. Or sometimes it's useful to um, like hone in on you know an object or um, I don't know, just like a dot on the floor or the ceiling and anchor to you know something that you see. And that's a great way to feel grounded in your body and in the present moment as well. One more minute left, you might relax just a little bit deeper into the posture. Sink into your breath. Melt into your mat. Let the floor hold you up. Take an inhale, body rise. Anything you want to let go of, sigh it out with the exhale breath. When we hold postures for long periods of time, we want to take care to come out of them slowly because our body kind of like molds into that position. So if your right ear is rolled down, if you're looking to your right, slowly at your own pace, bring the back of your head to the floor. If your left ankle is crossed over your right ankle, slowly uncross ankles. If your elbows are bent, take your time straightening your arms. And if your left hand is on top of your right hand, uncross hands. At a leisurely pace, walk your hands and feet back to the center line of your body. Part of this practice is just a practice in slowing down. You might stretch up and down for another moment. And then on your own time, you can take your arms and legs down back into your puddle pose, Savasana. If lying on your back with your legs straight does not feel good to your lower back, you are welcome to place a small pillow or blanket under your lower lumbar spine. And or you might try bending your knees so that your feet are on the floor. Let your knees rest together. This is also a great way to relieve pressure from the lower back. There's so many options and variations in yoga. And I don't always have time to call out all of them. Um, but if you're ever curious about a certain posture or trying a different variation of a posture, a different way to enter or exit it, I'm always happy to talk before or after class. And um, I might not have the answer, but between you and me, we can usually, you know, like workshop something that works for you. Okay, let's do the other side of the nano pose. Bring your feet close together, arms overhead, flex your toes back, stretch up and down. And at your own pace, walk your hands and feet to the left side of the room. You can cross your right ankle over your left ankle to stretch the right IT band. And keep your arms long overhead with right hand over left hand. You can bend your elbows, catching opposite elbow and opposite hand. You can also have one or both arms down by your side. 
you can keep the back of your head on the floor or roll your left ear down towards the floor, stretching the right side neck. Um, for the sake of symmetry, you know, if you crossed your left ankle over your right ankle on the other side, you might cross your right ankle over your left ankle here. However, we're not symmetrical, right? So this side might necessitate a different shape. Maybe on the other side, it was like easy to, you know, bring your hands and feet to one side and here you can barely move your hands and feet. That's okay too. A little bit goes a long way. Again, less is more, especially, especially in yin yoga when we hold postures for long periods of time. So I said at the beginning of class, there's I think this pervasive idea in yoga right now that bigger is better and like a deeper posture somehow equates to like a deeper yoga practice. And I really reject that. And that's frankly one of the things that I love about yin yoga is um, not just in our body, but like in our spirits and in our minds and in our hearts, it's calling us to slow down and to do a little bit less, which is such a joy. Observe where you might be holding on to tension in your body. Let it go through the exhale breath. Sometimes I observe that, let's say, you know, I'm holding tension in my chest. And no matter how much I focus there and try to relax, I still feel tension there. When that happens, I like to practice um, a little bit of creativity and imagination. So if there's a part of your body that just won't quite release, that's okay you might imagine what it would feel like or what it will feel like when that part of your body relaxes. And sometimes just planting that seed in your mind is a really great place to start from. Take an inhale, feel your body rise. Anything you wanna let go of, let it go with the exhale breath. This is a practice of slowing down. There's no rush. If your head is rolled to the left, you might slowly roll the back of your head to the floor. If your elbows are bent, straighten your arms. If your right hand is on top of left hand, uncross hands. Uncross ankles. Take your time walking your hands and feet back to the center line can stretch up and down or do any other motions that feel good to your body. I'm kind of gonna rock right and left here. And then at your own pace, bring your arms and legs down for Savasana or puddle pose. And again, you can bend your knees with feet on the floor if that feels better to the back. Bend your knees if they're not already. Feet on the floor. Roll to one side. And if it feels good, you can even give yourself a little hug here. And then keep rolling onto your abdomen for Sphinx Pose. This is another back bend, kind of similar to Cobra, but a little different. Can't quite see me here. I'm going to come to the side. You're going to bend your elbows so that your forearms are on the floor, hands and elbows about shoulder width distance, feet about hip width distance. Let your feet relax onto the floor. You're welcome to have your elbows directly under your shoulders. You can also walk your arms forward so the back bend's a bit more subtle. 
Um, in general, in yin yoga, we're relaxing our muscles in the body. Um, however, in some postures, there are there is some activation. So in this one, you do want to press your forearms down so that your shoulders are out of your ears. So rather than having the shoulders and the ears, keep your neck long and chest proud. Chin away from the chest. It's a really great way to stretch out the chest and the shoulders. We're going to hold here for two minutes. So relax through your feet, your legs and glutes, relax your pelvic floor. Soften through your abdomen and chest, but keep your shoulders out of your ears. Take an inhale, feel your body rise. Anything you want to let go of, let it go through the exhale breath. Bring your elbows out and your hands in. You can lower your head to the floor so that your forehead is on the floor. You might also look to one side with one ear on the floor. Send deep belly breaths in and out through your nose to massage the front of your body. Breathe deep into any point of tension. Let the floor hold you up. If you're looking to one side, gently lift your head look to the other side, other ear on the floor. Lift your head, put your hands on the floor under your shoulders, press yourself up. We're going to take a wide-legged child's pose. So feet together, knees apart. Start to sink your hips back and reach your arms forward, neck long, forehead down to the floor. We're just going to hold here for a minute to stretch out the spine. Tapping your arms overhead does not feel good. You can bring your arms down into fetal pose. You're stretching out through the toes, the ankles, the knees, into the hips and inner thighs, lengthening through the lower back, middle back, upper back, all the way through the shoulders and neck. You might experiment with a shallow breath and then a really deep breath, feeling your ribs expand and contract with the inhale and exhale. As you're ready, lift your head, walk your hands in, press yourself up. Very nice. Turn around, back into your puddle pose. Bend your knees if they're not already feet on the floor, keep your left foot on the floor, lift your right foot off the floor, cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Option to keep your left foot on the floor or lift it off the floor, bringing your thighs in towards your abdomen. This is supine figure four. You can keep the hands on the floor. You can grab the outsides of your legs. You can also uh, bring your right hand, right arm in between your legs, left hand outside of left thigh, and then interlace your fingers behind your left thigh. It's a great hip opener. 
good side seat stretch. We're lengthening the lower back. It's really good for sciatica. The sciatic nerve is the longest nerve in your body. It goes from the lower back all the way into the foot. And it is a thick nerve. Your sciatic nerve is about as thick as your thumb, which is kind of mind blowing to me. Um, and often it gets pinched in the lower back and it can cause pain down the leg and into the foot. So in this posture, not only are we stretching out the outside of the leg and that hip, but we're also lengthening the lower back where that nerve often gets pinched. It's so fascinating to me, right? Like the sciatic nerve is a beautiful example of, you can feel deep pain in your foot, but it's not your foot that's in trouble. It's that your um, lower lumbar vertebrae are compressing and squeezing into that nerve. And that's such a reminder, like so many things in yoga and your body and also in life are like, you might feel deep pain, whether it's physical pain or like emotional, spiritual, psychological pain from something, right? But it's, it's not actually that thing, right? It's something else, something else in the body, something else that's happened like in your past or something else going on in your life currently. I often think about that when I react to something, when I feel pain, whether it's in my body or elsewhere, is it really pain in my foot or is it pain in my lower back? Is it really that that person is doing something annoying or is it, or is it reminding me of something else in my life that, that could use a little extra, you know, care? You can inhale. Anything you want to let go of. Side out. Release the grip from the backs of your legs. Slowly bring your left foot to the floor right foot to the floor. We'll do the other side, lift your left foot off, cross your left ankle over right thigh. Option to keep your right foot on the floor or lift your right foot off the floor and release your 10 fingers behind your right thigh. Keep your shoulders and hips on the floor, head on the floor. You might ever so slightly tuck your chin in to lengthen the neck spine. Nothing too crazy, right? Just think about your spine getting a little longer. So you open through the hip. You might send a deep breath into your hip. Observe where you're holding on to tension in the body or maybe if you're pushing yourself a little too hard into the posture. Remember that less is more. This is a physical embodiment of rejecting a culture that's constantly telling us to do more and to go faster and to push harder. This is a physical embodiment, a physical rejection of that lie that we have to always be doing more, right? It's, I think, a lie. I think yin yoga is a wonderful practice in slowing down and doing less. Inhale, body rise. Exhale, body fall. Breathe in. Anything you want to let go of, sigh it out. Slowly release any grip you have from the backs of your legs. Return your right foot to the floor left foot to the floor. We're gonna go into a spine twist. Take your arms out to the side and have your arms long. You can also bend them, practicing them like goalposts. From here, start to roll to the left so that your right hip stacks on top of your left hip. Draw your right shoulder down towards the floor. You can keep the back of your head on the floor or look over your right shoulder, bringing your right ear down. So spine twist, an abdominal wall twist. You might still feel a little stretch on that hip or side seat. All you have to do is breathe. Relax through your inner thighs and outer thighs. Soften through your biceps, shoulders, and chest. Relax your abdominal wall, even as it gently twists here. Let your hands, feet, and head be heavy. Take a 
and inhale. Then let it go. If you're looking to the right, gently roll the back of your head to the floor. Sometimes I like to actually place my hands on my knees, thighs, and with or without the help of your hands and arms, roll your right hip to the floor, and we'll do the other side, roll to the right, so that left hip stacks on top of right hip. You can have your arms out perpendicular to the body. You can bend them like goalposts. You can keep the back of your head on the floor, or you can look over your left shoulder. Sometimes I'll notice that, you know, for example, I'm holding on to tension in my inner left thigh. And I'll draw my attention there and I'll relax my inner left thigh. And then, you know, my mind will wander or I'll go to a different part of my body. And then I come back to my inner left thigh and go, oh gosh, it's tense again. Relaxing something once doesn't mean that it's going to stay relaxed forever. Addressing a problem in yoga or in your life once doesn't mean that it's addressed forever, right? So it's, it's a, um, <laughs> we're going for practice, not perfection. And sometimes I think there's something to celebrate just for noticing, like, mm, I'm punching my jaw and I'm going to practice relaxing my jaw. Probably not going to stay relaxed forever, but I'm going to celebrate the fact that I observed and that I tried it out. I gave it a shot, right? The next time I notice that I'm cleansing my jaw, that neuromuscular pathway to relax the jaw is a little bit more entrenched. It might be a little bit easier to relax the jaw. You can inhale. Anything you want to let go of, sigh it out. If you're looking to the left, gently roll the back of your head to the floor. At your own pace, you're going to roll your left hip down. You can keep your knees bent with your feet on the floor and also straighten your legs. Bring your arms down, final pebble pose. Earlier, I shared that Zen poem, that riddle poem about the farmer and his horse and his son. And the, this will see attitude. And if that was useful in any way, you might take that into the rest of your day rather than creating great expectations for what's going to happen in the next few hours of your life. What if you just observe and go out into the world with a little bit more curiosity, a little bit more of a we will see attitude? And just notice what happens. It's a practice, something you might try. You might not like it, might not be useful, but it might be just something that you're curious about or that you take with you for the rest of your day, if you want. We'll see. Take an inhale, body rise. Exhale, body fall. You are loved. You are loved. You are so very loved. Stay in your final pedal pose for as long as you like. You can even take a nap if that feels good. It is a joy to practice with you and be back. And I hope to see y'all very soon.